the Salamander Man here, back with another video, and this time I will be discussing appropriate food choices for terrestrial juvenile newts or salamanders and the advantages and disadvantages of each food choice. Raising larval newts and salamanders can be quite a challenge, especially when you consider that newts and salamanders in the larval stage will only go after live food until their front and back legs have grown in. And due to their small size, finding the appropriate food can also be quite difficult. While larval stage newts and salamanders have their own sets of challenges, newly morphed terrestrial stage newts and salamanders come with their own sets of challenges as well. And one of the biggest challenges, in my opinion, is feeding. When your newt or salamander finally morphs into its terrestrial stage, it must adapt to a totally new environment. And of course, this also means adapting to hunt for a new food source. And not only that, due to the newly morphed newt or salamander adjusting to their new environment, your animal may not eat right away. And due to the very tiny size of some newly morphed newts and salamanders, finding the appropriate size food can be quite difficult. So that will be the focus of this video. So now it's time to run through a list of appropriate size food choices for newly morphed terrestrial newts and salamanders. The first on the list are springtails. Springtails are a very popular and common choice of food for newly morphed newts and salamanders and even poison dart frogs. Springtails are often utilized to sow the substrate of an enclosure with a food source. They can help to function as a cleanup crew for the enclosure and also due to their tiny size they make an excellent food source for newly morphed newts and salamanders. Next on the list are fruit flies. Fruit flies are a common food source for many amphibians and they are readily available for purchase in many pet shops. And the fruit flies commonly available for purchase are flightless fruit flies making them easier prey for your newt or salamander. However, when it comes to fruit flies, there are a few small drawbacks. Fruit flies should be dusted with calcium or some sort of vitamin powder, as they would otherwise lack the complete nutrition that your newt or salamander needs. Also, even though the fruit flies may be flightless, they can still escape your newt or salamander and climb to the top of the enclosure where your newt or salamander cannot reach them. With that said, because fruit flies are so readily available, I would definitely recommend using them as a food source. Next on the list, and perhaps one of my favorite food sources to use, are white worms. In my opinion, white worms are one of the best food sources you can use. They have great nutritional value and are the perfect size for a newly morphed terrestrial newt or salamander to eat. They are slow moving and this makes them easy prey for your newt or salamander. However, there are a few downsides I should mention. White worms are not available in pet shops and must be purchased online, and they require lower temperatures in order to live, so they could die during shipment in warmer weather. With that said, I highly recommend acquiring white worms to feed smaller newts and salamanders. Next on the list are dwarf white isopods. As their name implies, these isopods only grow to a very small size, and this small size makes them suitable as a food source for newly morphed terrestrial newts or salamanders. They are also very easy to maintain and culture as well. These isopods are slow moving, making them easy prey for your newt or salamander. However, they do have a tendency to burrow, and this means they can still escape your newt or salamander. Like some of the other food items mentioned previously, dwarf white isopods are also not readily accessible through stores. They must be purchased online or from another hobbyist. With that said, dwarf white isopods still make a great food source for small newts or salamanders. And now, moving on to the next part of the video, I want to go into a little more detail and show how we can entice newly morphed newts or salamanders that are just getting used to their new environment to eat new and unfamiliar food. It can be quite difficult raising newts and salamanders of such a small size. 
and in my experience, getting these salamanders to eat can be quite tricky. However, with enough effort and patience, it is possible to be successful in raising these small salamanders. This young Easter Newt F is still very small, only about an inch long. When it first came onto land, it did not eat right away for about a week, almost a week and a half. So I'm going to show you what I did in order to entice this animal to eat. To start off, I used springtails to sew the substrate with food. However, this alone was not enough. After about a week, I started utilizing the white worms. But even this did not get the animal to eat right away. And you can see how the newt even turns away from the worm. And so, I continued to attempt to entice the newt with the white worms over the next few days. And the newt continued this behavior of seemingly being interested in the food and then turning away. Until finally, the newt did in fact eat the worm. So in order to get this to happen, here's exactly what I did. I utilized the white worms to entice the newt to become interested in new food. And I also used a small pair of tweezers and then I simply placed a worm on a leaf in front of the newt where the worm cannot quickly escape into the substrate. And at this point, the worm would be in clear view to pique the interest of the newt. So this is the method that I used to get my small Easter Newt Eft to eat. And this same method can be applied to other small newts and salamanders as well. So for anyone attempting to raise small terrestrial newts or salamanders, I hope this video helps. Because raising such fragile small animals can be quite a challenge. And in a hobby where the overcollecting of wild populations runs rampant, I want to show that it is possible to succeed with these animals with enough patience and effort. And so I will end the video here. And remember, when it comes to feeding your newts or salamanders, whether they are aquatic or terrestrial, always vary the diet of your animals to give them the proper nutrition that they need to grow. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, share the video, comment down below, and please subscribe. Your support is much appreciated. Until next time, I am the Salamander Man.